Welcome to Planet Ice Witness for this episode of Drop the Puck. This is a morally Midlands Cup matchup between the Witness Wild and the Solihull Barons. Yeah, Gary, this is one on the calendar that a lot of us have been looking forward to. It's been a long time since these two teams saw each other in action. Obviously, this cup run by, but you know, there's a lot of household names here that are both you know, supporting both teams. But especially for Solihull, and a few I haven't called in a few years. Well, it's, it is interesting. Obviously, you can catch any of the old team games on our episodes on YouTube and various other uh, formats. But the, the main thing about this one is you've got a team here, the Solihull, uh, in third place at the moment, Ben. But they narrowly missed out in a, in a game against Witness in this tournament. But they beat second place Sheffield, so they're quite confident and quite possibly could turn witness over here today well they could and what's not supporting witnesses favour in this one is the fact they are running with a few injuries a notable absentees tonight are going to be the likes of Mike Gilbert Harrison Walker um, Hey Jackie we, we won't be ice neither tonight uh, but obviously to support those who have had a fresh face come back on one or two so uh, Tom Jackson returns to the ice night as well Daniel Hyde returns to the action and I believe we're going to see Evan Coles uh, between the pipes tonight well, the interesting fact going into this one is, as I said earlier, uh, Solihull narrowly lost to Witness last time, and they lost 7-5. Um, so Witness have got the hand in this one. But they've already beaten Sheffield, as have Witness as well. So Solihull 6-5 over Sheffield. If Witness wins tonight, they clinch it. They do, that's correct. So um, I believe in a statement that was put out earlier by Witness today, they confirmed that the, the situation would arise where if Witness beat Solihull Barons tonight, they claim the title of the Midlands North Cup, but then that would see them progress through to another playoff fixture against the second place team from the, uh, the North One End Cup, or whichever, the North One North Cup. Uh, and I believe at the moment it's looking like that could either be the Whitley Warriors or I believe it's either Solway Sharks or Billingham Stars. I think they're, they're, it's really tight up there. The thing for me, Ben, is these tournaments witness you to thrive in these type of things. Uh, it's their kind of thing. I know that they're, they're, they're giving a good account of themselves in the league, and we'll get more league action in due course. Obviously, the league want to try and get all these cup games out of the way. Nothing better than going into Christmas knowing that you've clinched the title. There is, but at the same time, you know, it then puts that in your mind that you've got that to roll over into new year. There's something else you've got to look forward to, to prepare ball for, to plan. And you know at the moment, you know, the head coach, Rich Hager here of the Witness Wild, he's already done well to hold together what has been a quite a rough start to this morally conference for them. Uh, and then obviously added in the fact that you had these cup games as well. You know, it, 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 let's put it into another perspective. It's like a football manager having to deal with internationals and cup tournaments and regular league play as well and balancing the players as well as the injuries. And, you know, right now I think Rich has managed to do that really well. But the key to today's game is going to be the physicality aspect. Now, we know Solihull are not a small squad. You know, you look at them on the ice, half of them look like seven foot tall. <laughs> Will the Wild be able to ride out some of those checks today, avoid some injuries and take it to the Solihull Barons in their own ring? Or is Solihull going to get some momentum going early and take it to witness? Well, you, you've hit the nail on the head of it for me, Ben, because the way I see this is, uh, as much as these cup tournaments are, are great and it's, we, we love to see ice hockey, it's great to get the guys and everybody wants to play, but at the same time, you've got to think to yourself, it's at the detriment of losing players. These physical games, especially in this model level, we're getting some really, really physical games. Players are getting injuries, and suddenly that could have an effect on your league. Totally, but then again, you know, every team has got the option at the beginning of the season to opt in or out of the cup. And if you opt in, you know what you're signing the paper for. OK. Well, it's all a recipe for a really exciting and interesting game here on top of the puck. So without further ado, I think it's time to go down to the ice. It's time to drop the puck. With both teams on the ice, we're going to get ready to start this game on this Halloween night. But let's start by saying a massive happy birthday, though, to my co-commentator with me tonight, Gary the Choppoli, the enforcer of passing. Happy birthday, you old bugger. I hope you have a good one. And uh, let's hope it's not a frightening performance by witness tonight. I'd just like to say there's a vacancy next week for a commentator. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Ben. Um, I would like to point out, though, 
nice to see a team with a shirt where you can read the numbers and the names. Well, you say that. It, it, it's a nice block <laughs> font. It's a little bit hard on the eye, but we'll, we'll do our best. I've got the team sheets in front of me, and boy, do they look interesting. Running down the Solihull sheet, I can pick out names already. The likes of Tom Saw, Callum Bowley, Bailey Challens, Sam Hewitt, Phil Mackay. These players are known to put on a show, so we are in for a treat tonight, Gaddy. Well, we know Callum Bowley of, uh, of old, and we know he can put Formerly the... Formerly uh, of the Telford Tigers. Yeah, so uh, obviously from our previous uh, playoff games and various, at various levels, we've seen all, most of these players, I would say. But uh, who's between the pipes tonight then, Ben? So it's looking like it's going to start with, for the Solihull Barons, is Sam Hewitt. Sam is a long-standing netminder with the Barons and up the other end is going to be the fresh-faced Evan Coles. Evan Coles managed to have an outstanding representation of himself at the moment. Uh, yeah, that last game, wild. yeah, that last game uh, we covered the on there, dropped the puck. Absolutely amazing between the posts, coming in the way he did. Obviously, we wish the best to Harrison Walker because he's suffering with an injury. Hopefully, he'll be back soon, but nevertheless... So, Mr. Ryder calls both teams to the middle of the ice as we get to get ready to get this game underway. Ben, is it time to... It is. Drop that puck. And as he does immediately, it's witness who gained possession early. Will Cox looks to play it straight in. And it's going to be a foot race early on there very quickly between Adams... And up at Beach again. Oh, out of Oh, my goodness. Hewitt reacts very quickly there to steer that away out the path of Kieran Beach. Well, that would have been an ideal start for the Wild there. And Barron's looking to counter very quickly. Here they go with Smith. Smith pinned on half boards. As Volkanovs does well. Turned away once more. Into the path of Beach for the Wild. Decides to put a loose puck in centre. It's immediately jumped on by number 15 there. Matt Morris as he comes out the gate. Oh, and pressure just tilted onto witness there for a moment as Barons look to retreat now with Maynard. Puck given up as we go to and fro in the no, no man's zone. It's picked up though by Sword of the Point, takes a shot off the blocker early of Walker, and that'll give him a confidence boost, set him good for the remainder of this period as he sees his first little bit of rubber. Solihull, however, still in possession. Looking to open up a pass lane or a shot here, but saw under pressure from Hager. It's given over quickly to Bowley. Bowley. Seen off the puck there by Widness, and it's dumped over. It's going to be a chase into the corner there between Charnock and Maynard, but the officials are going to blow that and ice in there as we go back up the other end. 18-26 remain in this first period. Well... Witness already starting to feel a little bit of pressure there off the Barons. Barons, we know, can get physical. They're quite demanding and quite their presence is there being felt already. But, nevertheless, Wild still keeping them out. Face-off will be right-hand side of challenge in the Wild zone. And it's a good draw in there for the Witness-based team as they look to dump that puck clear and they do so. That's going to go up the other end. And calmly picked up there by Bailey Challens. Challens finds Slater. They go back. Looking to set something up. Four check pressure from Hyde and Charnock. And again, Widnes just taking the time Ooh. to control. Lovely little chip on there from Hyde. Chases it into the corner with Whitehouse supporting. For the Barons, who's done his job there. Cleared mm. it out. And we're going to see Jackson now recover that puck for the Wild as he dumps it over to Kemp. Nice to see Danny Hyde back. Yeah, so one of the many injuries that the Wild have suffered in recent times. Hyde back on the ice, albeit prematurely from what I believe. But I think that's, uh, that's a result of the incident that happened with um, Jakob Hajek there, where he suffered a broken wrist for a slash that happened in the Sheffield game. Well, interesting. Uh, but both teams testing each other out at the moment. Uh, nothing much for the netminders to look after no two and a half minutes gone in this first period already and well still nil nil face off is going to be in the Solihull defensive zone left hand side of, of uh, Hewitt and Nett
And Barron's trying to clear that out, but again, great forecheck pressure as Armstrong and Wyatt applying that now. But Calvert's put one on net into the glove of Coles, who was thinking about letting that go there for Jackson, I believe. Just decided, you know, wait on that and freeze the play. And that play runs down 15 seconds of the clock. 17, 15 remain. Face off, picked up once more by the Wild. Looks to play that forward out in front of the Solihull bench, and it's Charnock there that is giving them a little bit of trouble. Wyatt chases behind the Barons net. As Solihull now under pressure from Nathan Britton. Into the corner is Henry Adams. Adams ties up with Britton on the board, leaves it for Wyatt. Wyatt comes in, body comes in there as Wyatt rides a check, and that was number 23, Farrell there. Smith just takes it over the line there, and that's going to be an offside call. And we can see already it's great forecheck pressure, pressing high up the ice from Witness. Will that leave him open to the back, Gary? Well, be interesting, only time will tell, but the tape to tape passing of the Barons needs to be a bit more clinical if they're going to make anything of it. Face off on the blue line, it's going to be Bowley and Hagger, and it's Hagger who comes out the victor of that little uh, tie up. Maynard scoops that last puck up, but here we go, it's Volkanovs. Volkanovs breaks it to three on oh, one. Well. It's given over to Hagger, and what a play that was there from uh, Richard Crow. Yeah, he managed to uh, get a stick in there and just stop the oncoming three with this wild players. Crow causing a vital deflection there. It's forced Hewitt to jump on that puck and freeze it, but yeah, a good play there between the three. Both teams playing very defensive at the moment, Ben. Face off again goes the way of the Witness Wild as they've won everything on the dot so far tonight. As Maynard's going to scoop that up there and look to clear that out. He's only managed to get it out in front of his own bench. Over the far side though oh. to Saw. Tom Saw looks to skate in. Great shot. Oh, it's in. It's in. Well, Saw tested Coles on the leg pad first. Yeah, he managed to pick that puck up as it come across the ice. Got past the Witness player and calmly slots it near post. Gives the Solly Hole Barons a lead here. It's with this wild nil. Solly Hole Barons won. Well, action will resume shortly on this puck drop, but it was the experience of Tom Saw that saw him beat out Jack Murray there, young witness defender. And obviously, with young netminder in the form of Evan Coles as well, who we know can stand up to a, the test of having pucks thrown at him, but... Well, we know Saw can do the stuff. We've seen him plenty of times on Drop the Puck in the previous seasons. He's a, a well-seasoned player, so he knows what to do. Face-off again goes the way of the Wild, as Robinson looks to clear that down ice, only makes it to the point. Barron's put that back in. It's going to be picked up there by Stanley. Stanley... Looks to feed it round. Picks it back up, shot on net, and again forces another save out of Coles. Into the corner they go once more. They've only managed to clear it out at the point. It's turned straight back in, though, immediately again by Stanley. Oh, sloppy play. Riley tries to clear it off Stanley's stick. Little body on there on Calvert as he goes into the boards. Yeah, Back look, up though, good to see. Yeah, he was looking at the ref there, looking to see if there was going to be a penalty. And here come Witness on the break, it's Robinson, takes a shot into Ooh. the chest of Hewitt. And I think we're going to see a little bit of friction start already, Gary. Let's just keep our eyes open for that. Yeah, Robinson bearing down on you, a big man, but uh, he couldn't make anything of it. And still remains with this wild nil. Sorry, Hall Barron's won. Oh, looks like we're going to get a call. And there seems to have been a penalty called now on Ashley Calvert. Well, that was a, a little bit unexpected, I think. So Calvert's gone in the box and 
with this face-off, it means that Witness will come out with the man advantage. Well, power play for Witness. Uh, certainly, it's going to give them the advantage, and they need something to get back into this, tie things up. But uh, as we just wait for the officials to um, sort things out with the captains. So Maynard and Kemp talking to Mr. Ryder there. And Callum Barley's having his uh, say as well. Oh, right. OK, so it looks like, Ben, I don't think the officials are going to be taking anything tonight. It's going to be quite a, a stern game. So... Not entirely sure what the call was there. It looked like it could have been misconduct against an official. Not too sure, but either way, Barons are now in receipt of a two-minute penalty. Wild now on the power play. Yeah, abuse of an official. Okay, so here is Stubbley. Looks to play it out, comes off the boards in front of his own team. Picked up by Charnock. Charnock has Britain in the centre for support. Decides to drop it back. Volkanovs. Oh. Volkanovs. Well, he dangled Hewitt high and dry, but he couldn't finish it. And then those changes there, Ben. Nobody's getting that. No. As the Barons do well to clear that out. And once more, picked up by Mulkai. Mulkai dumps that onto net. Coles easily picks that up. And there's a little bit of communication between himself and Charnock. There is. They look to get this going quickly. Stubby loses the puck out there. Picked up by. Number 24 there, Philip Mackay. But here come the wild shot oh. in from Stubbley. Blocker save. Good save. Back down onto the net of Colds once more with 52 seconds now remaining in the power play. Chardock gains his own, looks inside. Ridden into the boards there by Maynard. And Beach takes his time, back to Hager. Tried to get it back to Beach and it's jumped on and intercepted there by Andy Hayward. Knocked on once more. Can Beach get there? Crow's going to see him out first. Rung round, picked up by Robinson, who's bodied off the puck, which isn't something we often see. Hager tried to play oh. it back in. Crow with an absolutely beautiful defensive move there. It's telegraphed out, I think. The and Barons knew what was coming. Time ticking away slowly. Ten seconds remain of this power play. Adams pulls the puck back down onto the ice. This man advantage is going to go awry as Wilcox puts it in once more. The seconds tick away. Trap door opens. Calver back into the action as we go back to five on five. Well, another shot on net oh. there, and Hewitt denies. Witness. And here they go with Farrell. Farrell tries to drop that back there for Calvert, but it's picked up once more by the Wild. Wild take it straight back up the other end with Beach and Hyde. Hyde, well, it was Beach who put it on there. I think he was hoping Hewitt would cough it up into the path of Hyde there, but Barron's well. Good block there by Dan Hyde once more. And Gary, this is literally end-to-end -end action. Yeah, Witness couldn't capitalise on that power play. It could be that's a detriment, but things have stepped up a pace now. Pharrell takes it over the line, under the pressure of Britain. Armstrong's there now as he battles away. Gets around Ken Armstrong, puts it on net. And it's poking at the pickle out in front there. Coles can't wrap it up. It's in again. And, well, it looks like Coles has managed to freeze it out this time. He's got it in his equipment somewhere. <laughs> well, oh, and there it is. Look, right in the five hole. Oh, uh, well, well done. <laughs> managed to protect that well enough there. But, uh, nevertheless... 12.07 remaining in this first period here at Planetized Witness. Still remains Witness Wild nil. Solly Hall Barons one. So Dan Mulcahy at the face off dot with Britain. And Solly Hall finally get a draw win as Wyatt's going to chase that to the near side with Adams, but it's put into the corner once more. Looks to go inside the hash marks and take the shot and sails high and wide off the stick of Mulcahy. It's a Two on one situations, they rook up on the boards now, but he cleverly just drops that off for down okay at the point. Once more, Barons cycling this puck well, keeping the witness defensive unit moving. Witness not able to settle in here at the moment. Barons once more played off the board behind the net of the wild. They look to put it in. 
shot comes in one time. And that was a good effort there from Smith. Comes out. Wyatt swinging a miss. Manages to get hold of it this time. Puts it into the corner. And there's cries from the witness bench, but they're going to give that as offside. Uh, icing, apologies, icing. So down the other end we go. Well, getting tasty, Ben. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Oh. But I can't see this being a uh, high scoring game the way things are going. A lot of attempts, but no goals. A lot of pressure coming in early on here for well, the Barons as Bowley tries to put oh. one in. Goes over with the net and saw was in there as well. Good clear out by number 10 there, Ethan Britton, as they go into the corner once more. And again, shot oh. on, out, posted out in front, acting as a screen there. Can't see, it looked like Matt Morrison for a minute, it is. Kemp sees him off though, here comes Bowley. Puts it in once more into that danger zone and Bowley and Saw call them the postmen because right now they're delivering them pucks right into that danger zone. Yeah, Matt Morris just in the uh, in the way of uh, of the netminder there, hoping to try and get a deflection. Well, and again. But Coles has got an answer for everything so far. Hewitt decides to skate out of the net to aid that Maynard. Under the pressure now as Volkanov saw an opportunity. Haggard couldn't. Retain the puck, Stubbley decides to dump it in, just allows Witness to reset. And Haggis taking it off here, it's a net shot! Oh, in. what a and goal! Volkanov makes some pay! Well, what a play! As Hager manages to scrape away the loose puck, feeds it back in, and Volkanov slots it home, giving Witness that lifeline and bringing it, let things level here now at Planet Ice Witness. It's Witness Wild 1, Solihull Barons 1. Well, Gary, that's an absolute interesting game. <laughs> he just <laughs> opened it right up, hasn't he? You wouldn't expect that sort of mistake from that quality netminder in team, but it has happened, so it proves the raw chinks in the armour of the Barons. Well, I must say, I was going to, I did, I was going to point out at one point the Barons netminder was well out of his net, and I thought that you won't, don't want to be doing that with the Wild because if they pick an opportunity and see that open net. They'll, they'll go for it. Very much so, and that's exactly what happened in between Volkanovs and Hager. They've brought the Baron back down to their level, and here we go now once more into the corner as Hager's going to receive that off from Stubbley. Oh. It's fallen out, shot in. Oh. Well, it was a great shot from Challens at the blue. Bailey Challens, we know we've seen him before here and dropped the puck. He's got one hell of a shot on him. Don't give him an opportunity. And here we go up the ice once oh. more, and it's slip of... The edge from Challenge. Oh, Ooh. you expected Volkanovs to be there as Peach. <laughs> what an absolute belter of one right across the paint there. Could have been 2 1 with 8.55 remaining in this first period. Well, we said it in the last game as well on um, Drop the Puck. Any team that comes here, you've got to be aware of witnesses' counter attack very quick. And if loose and they're on you. And here we go again, Hyde, fakes the shot, decides to put one, and it's gone off the blocker of Hewitt into the roof of the rink here. And we're going to get a stoppage and play with 8.37 remaining in this first period. Well, I noticed one of the, um, I noticed a few of the staff were wearing fancy dress before, Ben, uh, all dressed as Halloween now, but I noticed there was a slush puppy walking around, a giant white dog. <laughs> Well, Gary, I don't know what was been in your coffee, but uh, <laughs> no more of that. As Mulcahy goes to put it oh. in the front there and takes a second bite of the cherry, comes up and here come the Wild, trying to get back out the zone and make something of it. Charnock skates it over the halfway, decides to dump it in there past Harrison, chases it into the corner once more, supporting now there by Dan Mulcahy as well. Put comes out in possession of the Solihull Barons as we look to reset and go again once more. Adams. Only manages to find Wilcox, who clears that out off the board. Great pass over to Mulcahy, who unfortunately just crept over the line. He's offside. Well, he's, he's arguing the case there. <laughs> and again, the officials not taking any of it tonight, Gary. Yeah, no, the last thing you want to be doing is saying, Mr. Official, you are wrong, because you'll spend a bit of time on the pine. So, from the blue line dot, we've got Bowley and Britton, and it's gone the way... Ooh. Immediately they've called that back. Britain won that draw initially. 
Oh well. We're going to get that again, are we? This time, though, it's gone the way of the Barons as they look to get this puck into the wild zone, which they do so. So just rides Kemp off the puck there. Can he get it under his stick? He hasn't been able to. And Wild looks to clear out those big stretch passes. They find Armstrong. Armstrong gains the zone. Can he get round this man? Looks to cut inside. Well, it was a great backhand pass there, but it looks like it's gone off the side netting. And he was trying to find Wyatt skating in. Puck once more, now in the wild zone. Oh, Jackson, can he get over there and fend off Morris? Well, mistake causes the loose puck. Who's going to get there first? It's a Barons player, and in the form of Matt Morris, right on his stick, takes a shot, and again, Cole seeing rubber, but Evans done well to uh, keep that out there and freeze up the play. Well, I'll tell you, the fans of Planet Ice Witness today, even though the weather's starting to make a change outside, get a bit cold, and we know it's cold in these ice rings, but they're very quiet tonight, Ben. Yeah, Gary, I think there's a... It's an intense game. It, it's very... It, it, it has got that cup game feeling. Yeah, yeah, very much so. As face-off won once more by Witness, but it's intercepted immediately there by number 51, Ash Calvert, for the Barons, who's now got it in the corner, fighting away with Brealey. Decides to play that round for Elliot Farrell. Lays it off once more for Slater. Wild keeping them in those corner spaces. I found a bit of Ooh. space here. He managed to get a shot off. Trying to... And uh, dumping away as he can breathe a sigh of relief the Wild once more. Yeah, trying to find a gap between uh, the netminder and the near post. Here it lays that off for Calvert. Calvert looks to take it through the ice. All the way down into the glove of Coles who freezes that up. So, 6.26 remain this first period. And Gary, would you say it's fair that right now it's been less trick and a lot more treat? Well, it's been far than sp spectacular. <laughs> Face off, left-hand side of Coles in the witness zone, picked up by the Wild once more as he looked to try and get this puck out quickly. And you can see they were trying to go for Charnock there. He's looking for the interference call. Uh, Mr. Smith's going to bring that back. He's not having a minute of that. Well, a lot of voices on the ice there. People uh, arguing or shouting orders between each other. You need to be a little bit careful. We've already had one penalty for the uh, abuse of an official. Face off, right hand side of Evan Coles. Deep in the wild zone. Good draw in there for Solihull. As Wild looked to clear it out, tried to get it around the boards, unable to do so. Second time of asking. Stretch pass over the middle, picked up there by Adams out the air. Is that going to be a high stick? Oh no, he's calling a hand pass. Well, I did see some sort of aid there. I thought it was going to be a high stick call, to be honest with you. But they're calling the hand pass, and we take that into the neutral zone, right in front of the Solihull zone. So, six minutes two remain in this first period. Mulcahy's going to pick that puck up from the draw, finds Smith. Smith looks to go inside. Loose puck trickles through, though, intercepted by Robinson. Robinson finds the high man in the form of Charnock. Charnock looks to take the shot Whoa. into the glove of Hewitt and out again as the loose chain spills up. He's jumped on by the Wild. Can he get a second opportunity? Working it round. Oh. Miscommunication between Charnock and Robinson has given Smith an opportunity. Smith winds up, takes a shot. Easy save off the blocker there for Coles. Lack of communication, I think, there, Ben. Opportunity missed by the Wild. And here comes Hyde. Gains his own inside. Looks like he was going to wind up. Decides to lay off Stubbley. Stubbley under pressure. Three Barons plays round one. Wide player opening Armstrong. Armstrong skates through. Oh. Tries to get the puck back off the side netting. And Maynard's going to be there to pick up the remains and clear it away for the Barons. Oh. I say that, he's lost the puck on the boards on the far side, held up by Robinson, support coming in from Armstrong, but it's given away once more, and the Barons look to start another attack as they gain the zone. Quick one out in front, and Ooh. right out in front of uh, Cole's net there, but it's sailed wide, and Britain slams the brakes on, decides to use the boards anyway for support. Wyatt can't get round on Maynard, who's managed to turn that back the other way once more. Crow, off the Ooh. half boards, didn't quite go where he wanted it to. Wyatt just rides to check for Maynard there. 
Barron's again looking to find Saw. So, beautiful little pass there to Bowley. Bowley turns the rockets on. Takes a shot. Whoa. And Coles, although he come out of his glove, comfortably saved out. Freezes out with 4.26 remaining in this first period. Well. So far, Ben, end to end. And it's all square here at Plant Size Witness with uh, 4.26 remaining. Drawing for the Barons in the wild zone once more as they look to get something going. Can they nick a goal here late in this first period and take the advantage going in on the break? Shot comes in again, Ooh. the pucks are flying here, even at height level. I believe Lee came back to duck there and rides a check then. He's slow getting up there off the ice. That's not an injury that the Wild could do with right now, Lee Kemp. He's gone to the bench. Looks like he's going to get treatment very quickly. Yeah, probably a knock on his uh, leg or knee. We go back the other way, though, with the Barons. Dumped in once more by Crow. Held up in the corner, though, by Witness as they look to try and play that out. Loose pass goes flying past Hager. Once more is challenged in receipt to that. Looks to clear it out of the zone. Does so all the way down to Wilcox of the Wild. Wilcox manages to find... Beach, who can't get it past Challenge, and with the little back and forth there, forces Beach offside. Yeah, just try to uh, judge the pass, that stretch pass from the wild. But as he reached the line, play was already over offside. Find ourselves with a play, uh, face off. Face off right out in front of our commentary position here, just inside the uh, neutral zone blue line. Good draw in there for Solly Hull as they've dumped it into the wild zone once more, but it's in receipt now of the wild defensive man, Hyde. Tries to scoop that one and said he's giving it away, and that's going to be an offside call as Challenge was already over the line, and you could see there Pharrell was... Well, he's kicking himself up. Sorry, Calvert, Calvert was already over the line. And Barron's now getting into the, uh, into the fight and the dot. Another draw win. They look to play that round the boards to find Robinson the Wild. Only managed to make it to the point and force it into the neutral zone as the Barons defensiveman now trying to draw out the Wild players. Challenge plays that puck to his teammate who forced that puck through neutral to Calvert. It's going to be picked up by Farrell once more. Takes a shot and it's another great save from Coles. Evan Coles has had to have his head on a swivel early this first period. Whitehouse takes his time, dumps it around, picked up by Charnock on the half boards on the far side. Takes a second bite to clear it. And the Baron forwards all queuing up to take that one, but turn around once more. Armstrong decides to dump it on net. Clever play from Kem Armstrong there, allowing the uh, witness change to happen. Stubbly! Decided to drop it to oh. Britain. I think Britain even thought Stubbly oh. was going to wind up and take that then. I did. Yeah, and it almost had the opportunity to stab it past the net minor, but he's quick to respond. And the score still remains here at Planetized Witness with 2.07 remaining in period. Witness Wild 1, Solly Hull Barons 1. Barons with a crucial win there in the face off. As Witness trying to pen them in their own zone. Barron's managed to find a puck out. As that just comes off the plexi in front of the timekeeper's bench here. Fighting away is Smith and Beach, but it's coming to Mulcahy. Mulcahy, Ooh. well, didn't get all the power on that one that he wanted. I think he might have come off a skate. And Witness trying to find these long passes to get the, uh, the players in round the back and use that speed we've spoken about. But another one on net there. Forces Coles to freeze up. Yeah, so they all seem to be sending a lot of players forward once they, once one of their players gets a puck. They move forward in a pack and tend to leave themselves open a little bit at the back while trying to capitalise on that, I think. Face-off will be in the witness zone, right hand side of Evan Coles. And again, Solly Hull coming out now as the victor. Maynard takes a shot through traffic, spilled back out once more. Bowley looks to feed that puck off. He's found teammate as they now start to set up the cycle so feeds that round for Morris who just prevents the witness player coming in there on the check that was 
Really, who rode that one? Morris once more puts it into the danger zone. There's no well one done. there for Solihull. Witness have been able to clear it. And Volkanovs picks up the loose puck. Volkanovs and Beach. It's a two on two situation into the final minute. Hager skating in. Well, Hager wasn't quite ready for that. Beach missed it on the inside post. Oh, there's nobody back there. And now fighting behind the Solihull net. Can they clear it out? Great little deflection there from Volkanovs as they look to find. Beach, who's safe one more. He's got Hager in the middle. Will he use him? Tries to find him. Hager. Oh! And it's gone past. Still Beach. Out to Volkanovs. Oh! He's forced down. And he it <laughs> sitting on the puck. Teddy Bear in it. And he <laughs> saved it. And well, what an opportunity that was in the dying minute. Seconds even at this first period. Yeah, there was a lot of play there. But fortunately, the that minor for the balance managed to get it seated right between his legs. And uh, that puck's going nowhere. So, 34.8 seconds remain. Ooh. Can Witness pinch a goal here in the dying seconds and go into the break on the advantage? Face-off goes their way, but immediately Elliot Farrell comes belting out of his position and freezes that up. And here we go, it's a bit of a two-on-one. Shot comes in there, and that was from Slater. Hyde brought down, but carries on. 20 seconds remain now. Charnock. Can't take it off Slater. They've managed to find Mulcahy. Big diving stretch there. And that was from Wilcox. Onto the net once more, into the glove of Coles. And that runs the clock down to 8.6 seconds in this first period. Well, you can see Solihull desperately trying to get something before the break. Take that lead back. But uh, Witness keen to make sure that they don't go goal behind. So you can see there the referee's just calling order. 8.6 seconds. Good tie up there by the Barons on the dot. Ooh. And the Wild, it was Hager who's come out in possession of it though. Finds Chodok on the boards. There's the buzzer there. Oh well, Gary, that period had a bit of everything with it. Yeah, it's uh, Wild a bit slow to get out the starting blocks as uh, Solihull tried to put their presence made on that uh, witness wild net but wild managed to crawl back in after the balance took an early lead it's finished this end of this first period here with this wild one solihull balance one join us after this short break Breaks and Sun sponsor drop the puck. Welcome back to Drop the Puck for the second period. Ben, interesting first period, I must say. It certainly was, and I think, um, speaking with a few of the fans in the period break, it was noted that on the occasion that sometimes the Baron's netminder isn't exactly where he's meant to be. No, well, <laughs> let's see if we just could pick that up. As talking about picking that up, that one came down with snow on it. Still in play, though, as... Mulcahy looks to feed that round for the Barons. Playing a little tic-tac there behind the wild net. Once more with Dan Mulcahy. Put it back in the danger zone. Barons starting out early here as he means to go on. Murray able to intercept that. Couldn't clear it all the way back round. Managed to find a wild player though. And here we go with Vulcanovs. Volkanovs, can he get around his man? No, he can't, is the answer to that. And here comes Phil Mackay, down the other way. Great little between the legs pass, drops out there for Smith. Smith forced into the boards behind the 
Wild net though. Volkanov's using those boards to his advantage. Tries to get it into the zone once more. Still Vlad Volkanov's for the Wild. Lays that off. Tries to find Hager but has his pocket picked and here we go with the Barons. Barons into the Wild offensive zone. Shot comes on, oh. it's deflected down into the path there of Jack Murray. Oh. And Stubbly, well, he's onside, yeah, just but he's a, a lone bit, man. Yeah, a little bit too far for him, that. Morris is going to be there trying to dig that away. He's supported by Charnock, though. Also, he's got to face off Maynard as Morris and Charnock start to throw the bodies on each other. Back the other way, though, as Charnock intercepts that neutral zone. Turns that around, dumps it in from the halfway, looks to chase it. He's going to be seen off by Crow though. Crow holds that up against the boards once more, tries to clear it out to the point, picked up by Briley of the Wild. And this first two minutes already through on the second period as Wyatt looks to retreat to Briley here and we reset and go again. Big stretch pass, finds Robinson, wide open. Robinson thought about it, oh. then calmly dumps it into Charnock, but it's picked away easily. And I believe. The, possibly the best option there for Robinson would have been to actually have had a go. Yeah, I thought he would have uh, tried to fire one in from there, but... Well, either way, it's the Barons in possession with Saw. Straight back in, and what a shot from the blue from Morris there. Coles all the time in the world to see that one. Well, Coles is uh, taking a bit of pressure in the first period. And he seems to be comfortable with it in the second. But uh, certainly the Barons are carrying on where they left off. Again, Witness looking a little bit slow on the blocks here. You understand that they, they're, they're reeling from the amount of injuries they're suffering from the moment. Kemp talking to which back on the ice, good to see. But here come the Barons once more. Calvert. Well, that's forced out. Pressure and challenge. Gives it up once more to Stanley. Stanley rings that round. Going to be to Kemp. Leaves that for White, who knocks it on. Challenge once more. Puts it back in. Chases it down now to Stanley. But Briley's going to be there. Briley behind his own net. Oh. Can't clear it all the way out. Manages to do so now. And here comes Armstrong. Armstrong and Whitehouse. Armstrong takes a shot. Oh. Hewitt spills it up. But turns it away from net. And... Looks to go on the counter very quickly. Calvert, it's a three-on-two situation as the support comes flooding back for Widness. And now Bailey challenge once more. Armstrong trying to give the old fake pass knock. And you can hear the frustrations of the players on the ice there. Chris Wilcox not happy. Hager dumps it in. Volkanovs is going to be forced to chase that round. Can he beat out challenge? Well, yes, he can. He's managed to turn that put back in towards net, but only onto the stick of Whitehouse for Solihull, who now looks to play that one, and that's going to come off Murray's stick high into the ceiling. Well, 16.05 remaining in this second period. And Ben, it, to me, it seems like Witness playing a little cautiously. Yeah, we spoke about this briefly in the, in the period break, Gary. If you imagine this was a boxing match, in my eyes, the way Witness are playing it at the moment is they're letting Solihull come at them. They're absorbing it, they're rolling with it, they're trying to get the feel for what Solihull are bringing. And I think any minute we're going to see that sly counter punch and completely catch Solihull off guard. Either that or we could see a quick knockout by Solihull onto the bat and to the wild. Well, let's see how this goes now as Mulcahy skates in once more, looks to go inside post. Great seal on that post as Coles. It's spilled up for Phil Mackay though. And clear the zone once more on to Harrison who decides to go over to his D-man. Pressure from Beach and Volkanovs and well Coles doing well. And you hear the Witness fans now trying to G up the team. As we're gonna get another stoppage in play there with 15 33 remaining in this second period. Yeah, it sounds like one of the witness fans has been allowed to go back out to his car and get the drum because that was certainly missing in the first period. They were very, very quiet then. It is it is a very weird atmosphere here in Planet uh, Planet Ice Witness tonight. Very subdued. It's like they're all waiting for something to happen. Yeah, <laughs> even, even I'm feeling a little <laughs> bit like that to be fair. And the shot comes in and oh. what a save by Evan Coles and 
Jackson, a little bit of hooking there maybe by Cowley. But either way, it's, it's a Bowley, sorry. Oh, it, go, go is hide, hide. It's going all alone. Hide oh. well. Backhanded that right into the chest of Hewitt in the end. There's a player brought down. No arms up by the official. And the Barons look to quick, quickly jump on this. And there's bodies all over the ice. And there's the arm finally up. And it, I believe it's going to go on Charnock, who dumps the puck away. He's not happy with that. Well, the one thing you don't want to be doing is handing an advantage to a team who are putting pressure on. And that's what Witness has certainly done. And that's Liam Charnock to the box. Two minutes for tripping. So the Barons now on the power play. Witness on the penalty kill. And we've got to say, got to play more defensively than you had before. You've really got to watch what you're doing now. You can't afford anything. Puck drops and we're away again as Smith. Takes a shot and you can see there what the play straight away is. Maynard posted out in front of that paint, looking for the redirect. As the Barons look to set up once more, find Bowley open on the back door. Another shot comes in, oh. and that's off the side netting. Tried to clear it round and win this. Well, it's fallen to Volkanovs. Volkanovs beats out Smith, leaves it for Beach. Beach! Oh, oh. trying to get the shorty as he goes one on one. Well. And now what a great play by the PK unit there for Witness. That's what we say about Witness, they're lethal on that counter-attack. And uh, we've seen it many times already this season on Jumper Puck where they've scored short-handed goals. But uh, unsuc unsuccessful on this occasion. 1.29 remain on the power play now. Can Witness ride this out? They've got the Barons in their own zone. Don't forget, it's five on four in favour of the Solihull team as they come forward with that puck. Mackay puts it into the far corner. Can Briley beat his man out? Yes, he does. Only puts it into the corner as the defensive unit looks to reset once more. Here comes Solihull now, top of the house as he skates to the blue. Feeds that in, looking for the back door, Maynard. Out in front Whoa. again, trying to find number 23 there, Dan Mackay. And forces Solihull to start the cycle once more. Bowley, top of the blue. Off the blocker of Coles, oh, it's and it's in! Well, it went up and came down. The claim in a high stick. Well, you can see on the replay here, it gets blocked up in the air, and the balance defender back sticks it into the net. No one knew what was happening there, but nevertheless, the Barons are waiting to see if they've got a goal. There's a bit of a discussion going on about this. Well, it's Chris Wilcox at the moment. He's in discussion. Bowley's in there as well. We'll see what the official is saying. So one witness are currently claiming is as the puck came down, the Barons player had a high stick to bring that puck down in favour of himself and put it past Coles. Mm. And it's a goal. Yeah, I, I've got to say, I did think it was a goal, to be fair. Now, with 13.51 uh, remaining in this second period, witness while one. Sorry, all Barons too. Well, Chris Wilcox certainly not happy with what Mr. Ryder had to say there as he skates back to the bench, tail between his legs. But now it means that when we resume, it will be Sorry, all Barons two, Witness Wild one. And here comes the puck drop. Eager boys, there we go. Hager wins the draw there for the Wild. Jackson looks to find a big stretch pass again to Beach. And they're going to give that as an offside. Well, it looks like the Wild are desperate to just throw that puck forward and allow their forwards to skate onto it. Well, they need to wake up a little bit now. Try and get back into this game. What they don't want to do is let uh, Solihull edge away. Very much so. We were speaking of it, the metaphor of a boxing match. Right there, that was another good blow by Solihull. As Witness now looks to set up. Into the corner once more. Bring it out. Fans on Ooh. the shot, Hager. Winds up, takes another slapper though. Ooh. Second bite of the cherry. Keeps the play alive though, Jackson. 
on the half boards, looks to clear it out on the blue, gets stubbly, right into the glove of Hewitt, easy save. And Sam Hewitt reasserting some dominance on the ice there for the Solihull Barons. So Rich Hager's going to have to uh, start getting something together, make some plays happen for the witness while, because right now they're a goal behind. Face-off will be right-hand side of Hewitt in the Barron zone under the scoreboard here at Planet Ice Witness. Barron's win that draw and clear it out. Murray, under pressure, just wildly puts that puck into nowhere and it's scooped up by the Barron. Turned round once more though by Dan Hyde of the Wild. Challenges over there, takes the body on from Robinson. Charnock once more tries to put it across Robinson chases into the corner takes his time Wilcox tried oh. to one time it and didn't quite catch it how he wanted Farrell driven into the boards by Wilcox and Hyde is going to jump on that loose puck Calvert just circling like a shark out in front of this defensive unit now of witness great little play opens up some space Wilcox looks for that big stretch pass once more was it knocked on by Charnock, no it wasn't, that's going to be an icing call with 12-10 remaining in the second period Well, the witness fans need to get behind the team now because uh, almost halfway through this second period witness find themselves a goal behind in this Morley Midland Cup You see, you're saying that Gary witness need to give the, re the fans a reason to get behind them right now because it's silly sloppy play that is allowing Oh, it's at the pipes well, that's come flying off the, the pipe work there and trapped in the net as the fans come away with a souvenir. But Witness, need, like you were saying, need to give the fans a reason to get behind them because sloppy play and these wild long passes that are being telegraphed by them and Solihull are reading them really well. Right now, Solihull have got Witness on the back foot. Well, they played each other back in uh, October, well, October 24th, so it's over a week ago. And you've got to say that whatever happened in that game, Solihull certainly got the measure of the Wild. They came to town today with a plan and it seems to be working. As the face-off once again goes away of the Barons. Riley under pressure from Morris straight away. Only finds Saw on the boards. Saw still in control of that puck. Right the way behind the Wild net. Lees lets it go for a teammate. Morris from the blue, oh. great leg pad save once more. And you can see there that Kemp just trying to keep the paint clear. And that's clearly what they're doing here. They're just trying to put a screen in front of Coles. Riley gets his stick on that. Only finds Wyatt on the half boards. Looks to play that forward onto Britain. Britain backhand Ooh. into the path of Bowley. And Callum Bowley now just takes his time. Tries to create a bit of space in front of himself. Good stick lift there from Britain. But Bowley once again in possession into the corner. Poke check from Kemp. Just delays the flow he's got. But he's left it for Maynard at the point. So puts it across the danger zone once more, sails through the traffic. Nobody can turn it on net. And Morris now, again camping in front of the netminder. You can see here this top line for the Solihull Barons causing all sorts of problems for the Wild as they're forced to dump that away with 10.50 remaining in the second period as time ticking away. And a quick line change there for the Wild. Here comes Mackay through. Center ice takes a shot high into the netting above the plexiglass, brings about a stop in play. 10.40 now show on the clock. Well, these two teams are going to play each other plenty in the league, but in this Midlands Cup, it's making a good battle over here. Very much so. Another draw win for the Barons. And witness. Well, Volkanov saw an opportunity and chased it. Forces the Barons back into their own zone, where, where they haven't really been this period, Gary, fair to say. No, no. As they skate through the neutral zone once more. But they're playing with confidence, Ben, that's the thing. Dan Mulcahy forced onto the boards there by his man. Jackson does well to regain possession there. Finds B2. Straight away tries to quarterback one all the way over to Vulcanovs. And I think myself, yourself, 
our cameraman, half the guys sitting in the stands knew exactly what was going to happen there. Yeah, it's, it's, we said it before, the telegraph and a little bit of this, and obviously Banners have done their homework, so they know what to expect. And they're getting a man camped right in the middle of the ice there, uh, intercepting all those uh, long passes. But here come the Barons, looking for the man out in front once more. Great jump on there by Coles, just shuts down that play. Almost, uh, it almost trickled into Coles' hands there. Barron's a bit slow to respond. 9.36 remaining in the second period. Still witness Wild 1, Solihull Barron's 2. I didn't think I'd be saying that, Ben, this late in a game. Shot comes in, quick shot. Tried to catch Cole off guard, but it sails wide. Stanley now decides to put it around the board, but it's going to be intercepted by Wilcox. Wilcox fighting off his man there in the form of Elliot Ferrell. And they've managed to find Charnock. Charnock on a breakaway, he's only got Whitehouse with him. Oh. And Whitehouse with an absolute peach of a poke check. Back in once more though. Witness finally establishing themselves now in the Solihull zone. Bodies flying in everywhere. The friction and physicality is turning up. Wilcox decides to put one in. Through traffic, out oh. in front. Great save once more there by Hewitt. And the Barons clear the zone. I think the Wild are, are hoping uh, these uh, counter-attacks, they're looking for penalties that are not going to be there when the, when the uh, Barons come in and take the players out. And oh, there's something going off camera. It's between Hyde there and, well, number 22, I believe that is, Elliot Farrell. And straight over to defend his team is Jay Robinson. Well, it happened off camera. I don't know if we caught it. Yeah, it was just, just out of view, but um, nevertheless, it was very short and sweet, whatever it was. Well, but it looked like Elliot Farrell brought down Dan Hyde. And as the Hyde tried to get up, they tangled the legs and there was a little bit of to and fro in, of which Farrell didn't like it and turned around and almost cross-checked Hyde to the ice. But either way, finds himself... Riding the pine for two for that one. And it hands the Wild an advantage here. They get the power play. Let's see if they can uh, capitalise on that. Now, I know it's not correct, shall we say, or politically right to do, but is this now the game plan for the Wild? Get under the skin of the Barons, get the penalties out of them. Well, we know they're a physical team, Ben, and if you've got to press the red button to try and get the advantage... Stubbly puts that into the paint, but it's turned out once more. Put it back into the corner, kept alive with Wyatt. Wyatt decides to use Charnock in the corner. Liam Charnock leaves to go for Vulkanovs. Vulkanovs, unpredictable, what will he do? He laid it off. And this is the entire reason why Vulkanovs is on that power play, because you never know what he's going to oh. do. Charnock puts it in, well kept alive though by Stubbly, who takes a shot off the blocker and jumped up Hewitt to make that grab and deny any further opportunity for the Wild. Well, David Seaman would be happy with that uh, jump for the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Puck, Gary, wrong spot. Oh yeah, wrong game. <laughs> so anyway, with 126 remaining on the man advantage for the Witness Wild, we have 7 minutes 59 remaining in the period. Face off, right hand side of Hewitt. Good win there by the Wild as Stubbly decides to go back and forth with Vulkanovs into the corner once more with Charnock. He's got men in the middle, decides to go back to the blue line. Stubbly puts it up high and wide. Sails so high it goes over the net, over the plexi into the netting. I think that's in the car park, isn't it? And that's going to bring about stoppage in play as we run down the clock a little bit to 112 now remaining on the power play. Well, good defence so far by the Barons. Another draw in, goes the way of the Wild. Vulkanovs once more, gets that puck from Stubbly, feeds it to Charnock in the corner. Charnock back to Stubbly at the blue, takes a third shot. Oh. Comes off the leg pad of Hewitt this time, chased into the corner by Wyatt. Charnock's in there as well, holding that up is number 36 Henry Adams for the Barons. Trying to find an opening quickie, Vulcanovs. Oh, well blocked. 
Vlad calls for the puck from Joe Wyatt once more. Oh. Loses his edge, creates an opportunity for the Barons. Here comes Mulcahy, holds that puck up, chews the clock up, puts it in. What a great block there. And here comes Volkanovs once more at pace. Volkanovs looks to do something with it, cuts inside, oh. gets the shot off. And Wild player is crashed with the netminder there. And there's a little bit of friction going on afterwards as well with Harrison. Is, is that, that Hager? It yeah, looks like it is, it's Hager. Yeah. Hager and Harrison exchanging words. A little bit of face wash there. Dari, the touch paper is lit. It's almost fireworks night, but the, we may get some sparks early. <laughs> yeah, I think we might do. Um, we knew there was uh, Solihull could be a physical team. We've known that historically and dropped the puck. But um, you see, the main, if we were going to call this, the main card event here would have obviously have been probably Callum Bowley and Lee Kemp. That's who would have yeah, favoured to yeah. have gone. Um, but Tom Saw's known Tom to Tom Saw's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But right now, the Barons seem to be getting under the skin of the Wild because the Wild desperately trying to get back into this. 24 seconds remain on the power play. 6.57 in the period. Play resumes once more with... Beach. Oh, the shot comes in from Stubbley and once more, Tom Stubbley... He's just having a bad day when it comes to uh, getting that puck at the net. Well, I think the banners have seen more rubber than the netminder at the moment. <laughs> As Elliot Ferrell just down in front of us here from the commentary position, starting to get ready again to return to the ice. Puck drops once more as this final 10 seconds of this power play now ticks away. Barons do well to hold that puck up. Slater scoops the puck through the neutral zone. Force into the corner, two, one, trap door opens, back to five on five, and the witness Wild have got to kick themselves as they allow the man Ooh. advantage to go away. Beach finally wakes up and lets one rip at net. Out in front, Hager was oh. skating in through the hash marks, nobody could pick him up. Puck on net once more, Hewitt's denied. Backhand into the paint, cleared out by the red shirts. Oh, and here they so come with a three on two, oh, it's a bit of two on two now. Another shot in. Testing the fact that Evan Coles is still wide awake is so, and the blocker save puts it into the corner for the Wild and the Barons to rock up now on the half boards. Yeah, it's all a bit messy, Ben, in the middle there. And as Puck goes out of visibility of the officials, they're going to blow that one dead. Five minutes 54 remaining in this first period. Still Barons, a goal to the good. Yeah, it's a bit of sloppy play from both teams at the moment, but it's nevertheless, the Barons are quite confident. And they're uh, keeping that lead here at Planet Size Witness. It's 5.54 remaining. And the Barons still lead 2-1 over the Wild. Face off. Right-hand side of Coles. Picked up by Witness, but stolen by the Barons as they try and dig that away with Britain. Britain only manages to find the leg of a Solly Hull player. Again, Rook up on the boards. Wyatt now gets his stick in there to try and come out with the puck, but... Charnock, well, oh, it's in. Well, Charnock forced his man wide, but it's Ash Calvert who calmly comes around the back of the net there with the puck. Yeah, a bit of board play and a, well, a lot of board play. The puck gets fed just past the netminder, and uh, the Barons there uh, fortunately stabs it home. It almost rolls on its edge into the back of the net. It's now with this wild one. Solihull Barons three. Well, we spoke about that boxing match, Gary, and right now, scorecards in favour of the, the Barons. Uh, it's, you've seen some nice play from the Wild, but they just don't seem to be putting that final hit, if you like. As, once again, the Wild trying to push that forward with the likes of Hager and Beach. And it just seems like the Barons have got that extra gear which well, they're using all the time. I'm going to use, use your analogy, Ben, and just say, if this was a boxing match, the Wild are doing a lot of jabbing, but no big hits. They're not following it through. Yeah. Puck all the way down onto the net of Coles, and it's starting to get physical once more. A few hits going in off the puck then. The official right in the way of that one. Oh. Wild trying to set something up and they look like they could have broken away with that initial play with Vulcan obviously if Mr. Ryder hadn't been in the way. But now they find themselves in the Baron zone. Beach looking for someone. 
goes back in, tries to find Hager. And scooped up once more and taken all the way down there by the Barons number 15, Matt Morris. And calls well, what a save that was. Well, I've got to say, you look a bit so to respond to that there. Volkanov takes a shot. It's gone up and around oh, the back. It's in. Vlad Volkanov. No, it's... And it, well, ooh. Now, let's have a look at the replay. You can see there, Volkanov's rips one. And it looks like he has. It sailed up and over the back of Hewitt and in. Well, it's all been called by the officials now. That right now, the... Uh, the goalkeeper down that end. Um, the goal judge. The goal judge. The has, light is not on. No, it, no light went on. So clearly, he didn't see it go in. Well, we'll await the official verdict from our replay. It did look like yeah, the goal had gone like in. It gone in, but obviously, but we, they could be calling netminder interference at the same time, Gary. Yeah, we haven't got goal line technology, there. Yeah, we can't go to Vancouver. And it's no goal. No, no goal. Well, well. Trick or treat, and there's the trick for the Wild. No treat for the Wild. But surely that's got to put a bit of fire under them now with 4-10 remaining in this second period. The Barons got away with one there. As Barons looks to play that out very quickly. Bowley. Great pressure from Hyde. Oh. But Bowley's going to scoop that up once more. So, opens it up for him. The option for him to get away. Stubbly manages to find Charnock. Charnock has beat his out his man. Can't beat out the second one. Oh, he's managed to regain the puck. Is oh. he still onside? Yes, he is. Turns the puck over. And here come the Barons once more. Well, the wild defence at sixes and sevens, but they're able to do something. And the clearance clips the lighting rig here at Planet Ice Witness and sails up into the roof. Well, it's not the Astrodome, so you don't expect the route to be that high. <laughs> 332 now remain in this second period. And the Wild looking like they're now clutching at straws. Yeah, you've got to wonder, it just seems to be that they, they, they seem to be lost in the middle. I mean, you know, we get these counter attacks. It's like uh, Charnock there, he's got his turns his speed on, you know, goes up, as soon as he feeds it back into the middle, it's like. There's no communication. Puck goes the way of the witness wild off the draw win there. And here comes Hager. Hager looks to find Beach. Beach takes his time, puts it oh. across the net. You can see and again. Wilcox was skating in there and he's crashed the net literally under the cover of Dan Daniel Harrison. Yeah, it's uh, Harrison guiding him into the corner of the net. Well, it... <laughs> We're seeing the defensive units of the Wild. We're seeing the striking units of the Wild. It's this midfield neutralise midfielder sort of aspect. Yeah. There's no sort of playmaker. There's no delivery. And now you're starting to wonder, is it because the likes of Hijek, Gilbert, those guys are missing? Quite possibly, Ben. It, it, it could be having an effect. Right now, the Barons seem to be having a lot of the ice. They're dominating what's going on mid-ice. Well, Rich Hager having a word with the officials there. As we go to the dot, th 319 remaining in the period. Face off. Ends up on the stick of Harrison for the Barons. Looks to play that out. And finds Dan Mulcahy. Mulcahy over to Phil Mulcahy. Back to Dan Mulcahy one more time. Will he go Whoa. round? No, he's gone early in the seal on the... Well, the officials have blown that dead. Strange. Either way, that will go in the advantage of the Wild, though. Because it did look like the Barons were still in possession. Yeah, and he's, uh, I think it's going to be explained now to Slater what exactly happened then. Do you think, do you think the official's going? Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think you'll ever hear those words come out of an official's mouth. Okay. Can we scratch that from the record? <laughs> As once more, Wild look to clear the puck out of the zone and do so off the stick of Rich Hager. We enter the final three minutes in the period now. 
behind their own net. Barons look to play that puck out. Wild have got to get a goal. Oh, loses his edge, allows the opportunity for the Wild to come in, but can they make anything of it? No. Great little tussle there out in front of the Wild bench. And the fans have finally woken up. Haggett. Decides to drop that back to his defensive unit. Big play through there for Beach. Beach along the boards. Oh! And Put again. And again, the netminder has knocked the net off its posts. Well, the officials are trying to fix that while the game continues instead of blowing the play dead. And it does look to me, Gary, like that far post isn't quite on its anchor. But the game continues up the other end. Coles just going to clear that one out. And that's not, that's not in. I mean, the net, well, shot on net there, throws out by Coles, but up the other end of the ice, Sam Hewitt's trying to signal the referee to tell him that that goal was not sat on its moorings. Well, he did knock it off, so... <laughs> Well, either way, action finds its way back down into the witness zone one more time. I'm inside the final two minutes now of this second period. Well, interesting. And here we go. Mr. Riders now sends. Yeah, I was going to say, interesting that they let this carry on. That's got to go back in the slot. There you go. Might be an idea if you didn't keep kicking it out. <laughs> Puck drops into possession of the Barons once oh, more. right through? Yeah, right through that traffic and <gasps> out in front again. Managed to be turned away. Coles. Oh. Well, you can see what they're trying to do here and catch Coles on the back door. Shot comes in yeah. again through all that traffic from Whitehouse. Yeah, Coles is like padding that puck right across the face of goal, but he's leaving that back door open. Robinson has a quick look to see where Charnock was. Tried to rodeo past that right over. Whitehouse rings it round. Did I say it, Ben? It, it, this is clearly Whoa, a Whoa, and... Oh, well, oh no. really went in for the puck there against Calvert, and Calvert's gone to the ice. Yeah, he's... Uh, oh, he's tripped. He's just tripped. So no contact by anybody else, really, there. So a little bit of an unfortunate accident caused by himself. And uh, he'll go off the ice. While that's going on, Ben, dare I say that witness need to do to the Barons what they did to what you got to do to Whitley Warriors, which is you've got to stop letting them have the puck. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. Uh, well, hopefully they can do that with this final minute and five now remaining of the second period. Yeah, they need to try and get something at least. As the Barons look to set up and go one more time. Gain the zone with Bowley. Bowley looks inside to Saw. Great defensive stick lift there by Stubbley. Back up the other way, it's Hager. Hager and Volkanovs. Hager gains his own. Decides to calmly oh. put that puck through. Comes off the skate to Maynard and back the other way. Saw takes his time. Takes a shot. Comes down. Off Cole. Back the other way. Oh. And here it comes. Three on two. Volkanovs. Beach. Hager. Drop pass by Vulcanos for Hager, who's under pressure from Saw straight away. Um, Trying to rub him out of the play in these final seconds. There's a trip there. Cry from the bench and the, the players and the fans there. Oh, pucks come off the official. Well, I think this is uh, this is kind of thing that they're looking for at the moment. And you're not going to get these kind of penalties. Final what? 10 seconds. Oh, and, come on. You... Well, great save there. And they couldn't quite clear that. 2.6 seconds left. And I think nobody can actually believe what the heck is going on right now. Uh, I think Hager's going to have to take him in, give him all a cup of coffee and wake up because this is an unusual situation we find ourselves in here at Planet Ice Witness. The Wilds seem to have gone to sleep a little bit. Well, 2.6 seconds left, and you can imagine. There's the buzzer. Gary, it's at sixes and sevens. Everything's a little bit everywhere. Well, hang on, the official's blowing the whistle there. He's going to oh, he's having a quick word with Wilcox. But that's going to be the end of the period anyway. Can the Wild find the heads and calm down and get back into this game? Or are the Barons still going to run riot? Well, it'll be interesting to see 
as both teams go into the locker room. It's witness while one. Solihull Barons three at the end of this second period. Join us after this short break. Breaks and Sun sponsor drop the puck. Welcome back for this third and final period. And immediately the Wild fans making the noise, trying to rally up their team. Good tie up on the face off there between Britain and Mulcahy. And you're hoping that in that period break, the head coach of the Wild, Rich Hager, has grabbed them by the scruff of the neck and put some words of wisdom their way. But here comes Mulcahy, great effort. And the spray right into Coles' his face off the skates there. Of Slater as he came in. Well, got to clear his face up. Officials have not said anything. Um, if I recall, wasn't there a, a penalty on the last game where a player skated up and put ice into the goaltender's face? Potentially, but either way, it looks just waiting for Coles to uh, reset. Is he good? Yeah, okay, the puck there to the officials. And okay, we get ready to go. So we're going to be. Right hand side of Evan Coles in the wild zone. Early in this third and final period. Wild again under pressure early. Oh, good effort by the Barons. Comes off the iron once more. So it's as you were by the Barons at the moment. Well, that's it. it it's been working so far, so why change it, Gary? Yeah. You're hoping, though, for the sake of the Wild and potentially the title in this Midlands Cup. They come out firing just like Volkanovs there, but it's into the chest of Hewitt. Yeah, Volkanovs has seen, uh, well, I would say a few of the players haven't seen much action really. It's, it's almost as if uh, they're not there, but the opportunities, few and far between, haven't been capitalised on. So we're going to go all the way up the other end of the ice to the Barron zone now as we're going to get a face off left hand side of Hewitt and I don't believe Robinson was quite set there into Bowley for that one but either way puck drops and we go again that's come off the skate of a wild player but comes back out onto the stick of Bowley plays it in comes round the back of the net again Maynard. Right across the crease there leaves that into the corner picked up by Stubbly gets his head up what will he do here decides to slam the brakes on go back the other way being held up in the corner by Morris gives the puck up to Maynard at the Halfway line, shot comes in from Sean. It's already been blown offside. You can hear the shouts coming from the witness bench there for that. Yeah, a bit of an explanation from one official to the other, but certainly Dragons. Uh, sorry, Dragons. What was I talking about? The, uh, <laughs> the Wild of. Uh, you can see on the bench there, sorry Gary, that, is that Chris Wilcox again? Just He's really not having a good day with these officials, <laughs> is he? <laughs> As I say, the, the Wilds seem to be lost at sixes and sevens in this game altogether. As just wondering if... Uh, As you say, that they almost turned the puck over to the Barons, but here comes Hager, surrounded by red shirts, he's got support, oh. takes a shot, great leg pad save there from Hewitt, puts the puck round. Barons are quick to get people back, aren't they? Very much so. And the, like we say, although they're not a small team by any means, the Barons, 
they are quick on the skates and very agile. Yeah, they've, they've learnt the lessons quickly and they're quick. And it's Hager one on one with Hewitt. Hager! Oh. oh, denied. Puck comes all the way back out. Morris tries to find Saw. Stubbly reels that in as the Wild look to go again. And Hager's going to be kicking himself for that one. Yeah, Hewitt too should be. Uh... Well, that was dangerous there. The gate was open on the Barons bench. The puck manages to come out. Out in front again. And Coles has seen it away. Hewitt seems to spread himself right across where, the, you know, where he's deflecting a puck. He's confident that they're not going to try and lift it over him. Maybe that's the trick that uh, when Hager's one-on-one, -on -one, he needs to uh, just flip it up. So face off, left-hand side of Coles. 17-38 remaining in the game now. Widner still two goals down. Can they get something early on in this third period to keep the game alive? It's only well, two goals though, Ben, isn't it? It is only two goals and some will say the old analogy that it's the hardest lead in hockey to defend. But we look to go back over the other way. Here comes Volkanovs for the wild. Gets past oh. one man. Great pressure from Whitehouse. Tied him up there. And now on the boards into that corner. Charnock held up on the boards. Volkanovs tried to put it out in front. Oh. Steered up back out of the danger zone. Digging away is Charnock and Volkanovs. Barons come out in possession. Tried to clear it around. Calvert. Official get, gets in the way there. Not for the first time today though, Gary. Calvert into the corner. Forced around by Briley. Spins on a dime, taken down. Riding that hip well. Here comes Hagaru on the ice a lot oh. more than I think oh. he'd like to be. <laughs> but the stray pass is now picked up. Slater for the Barons, puts it across. Well, it was oh. Mulkai skating in. Stubbly and Mulkai over the far side, digging away. On the boards once more, Robinson comes in for support. Jay clears it out, but only as far as another barren stick. Riley goes full layout on the ice. Shot comes in, and there's a little bit of handbags there between Briley and Mulcahy, but it was from Dan Mulcahy there. The shot came in, and the Barons keeping the pressure up on the wild. Yeah, it's just those, those little lack of communication, the take to take passing of the wild has been lackluster tonight. It's something seems to be missing. Can't put my finger on it, but. Face-off will be to the right-hand side of Coles. They just need to get a goal, then. They do. They need something in this game, a spark of some sort, whether it be a big hit, dropping the gloves, a goal, something. And could it come now as they force that puck forward? But it's only going to end up on the stick of Henry Adams. Adams takes around the back of the net by Beach. Dan Mulcahy takes his time. Somebody in the crowd with the air horn. That is not the buzzer. I thought it was a, a, a ship. Maynard. He's like that run. Baron taking another shot. Ooh. I believe that was guy that's gone into the face mask of Coles. Yeah, he's gone down there. The official's going to blow that. He did get hit. And the last thing the Wild need is to lose their netminder. Oh, he's got him in the throat, he says. In my... Um, Your lip-reading skills there. Yeah, my cheap, cheap course on lip-reading that I got from... Somewhere online, I mean. Yeah, other, other, other lip-reading courses are available. <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping no Coles is all right. He has faced a fair amount of rubber tonight. As the medics just checking him over now. Yeah. But as we were saying, Gary, the Wild just... They don't seem to have been here tonight at all. Yeah, it's... It's almost as if they're just going through the motions. Do you know what? If, if I didn't know the situation was different, you would almost say that they, they didn't care about the game. 
Yeah, I, I, I kind of, I know what you mean. It's, um, whereas the Barons, well, the good news is Cole's got his lid back on. He looks to be okay to be able to carry on. Yeah, as I was saying, look, the Barons have come here with a game plan. They've stuck to it and they've got under the skin of the wild and it seems to be working. Um, like you say, why change anything? But something's got to change with the wild if they're going to, if they're going to get anything back out of this game. The, the first thing they need to do is get a goal on that scoreboard. And then, you know, anything could happen with a goal in it. Very much so. Bring them back within one, which would make for a, an outstanding game. But if the Barons get another one, an edge further away, I think, I think it could be the final nail in the coffin. With 15.08 remaining. Puck drops and we're back in action once more in the wild zone as they look to clear that out along the boards. And it's going to be chased down by Armstrong, but Crows there first. Sends that up to Saw. Saw gains his own. Forced into the corner and Armstrong and Riley collide. Allow Saw time to go around the back of the net. Puts it across. Oh, it's in. And it's in. Well, we said it. And it's uh, happened. That puck come flying around the back of the net, fed in, and the oncoming... It's Matt Morris. Yeah, Matt Morris slots it home, and it's now Witness Wild 1, Soluble Barons 4, and it's, it's this it's damage limitations now, Ben. Well, I don't know. If I, if I was Rich Hager right now, if I'd have told the lads to keep the discipline screwed down, I might be a bit at lax on it right now. As I'm expecting something now to give them a bit of a bit of fire, a bit of edge about themselves. We'll see, can they do anything now as Vulcanov's dumps that in? It's going to be chased up by Britain. Cleared out by Challens, only into the corner. But again, Barron's come out with that in possession. Skating forward is Calvert. Stubbly intercepts the puck. Looks to find Vulcanov's once more. Vulcanov's. Takes a shot oh. early. Great save there out the glove by Hewitt. Hager takes the body on as he dumps it back into the corner. Volkanovs. Again, Barron's working the wild well on the boards. Shot comes through traffic. Hager can't do anything about that. It's come off his body and down onto a Barron stick. And here they come again, Fer Ferrell. Big hit from Murray. Background once more. Wild looking to play this out. Here comes Haggart. Great poke check there by Challens. Murray puts it back in once more. Beach just uses his skate to control that. Kieran Beach. Oh. And that could have potentially been a tripping call, but right in front of the official, though. Wilcox just loses out on that. He's turned it over. Slater winds up, takes one off the leg pads of Coles once more. Oh. And they're picking up the scraps as well. Well, I don't know if the Wild are playing hockey or curling, Gary, because there's that much sweeping going on. Because they're trying to clear out everything. Robinson uses the Barons. Oh, well. Oh, too far. Interestingly, now we've gone to the old Hull Jets line of Robinson Beach and Hager. As Hager has got to chase down Daniel Kai here. Skates in, shot comes in. Great answer from Coles. As he deflects it back onto the ice. Beach trying to gain possession. Can't get it past Harrison. Puck runs loose, so he's going to be scooped up there by Adams. Adams turns around, creates some space. Finds Mulcahy on the boards. Looks to play it through middle. Turns straight back around by Briley, though. Beach slams on. Still in possession for the Wild. Finds Stubbley, who takes a shot off the blocker. Stick saved it. Do you know what they're doing? The Barons are getting people in the way. So, denied there is Wilcox. Looks to skate in. Oh, Stubbly, apologies. Stubbly, still Stubbly. Backhands right into oh. the way of Hewitt. And that clearance onto the stick of Briley, a centre ice. Well, the Wilder found another gear, but is it a gear too late? As one of the Barons players loses his edge. We're going up there with Morris now. Gains his own. Looks to take a shot early. It's come off a... Wild player, tried to feed it back round. He forced round the back of the net. 
into the corner, loose puck, going to be jumped on there by Crow and it's exited the zone. Wild can push out, breathe. Bowley takes his time, flicks it in. Quick line change for the Barons. 11.22 now remain in the game. Still, Solihull Barons, two goals to the good, or three goals to the good, I should say, as Calvert intercepts that. Turns it round just inside centre ice, Vulkanovs. Vulkanovs forces himself into the corner, Wilcox! Oh! Oh. Well, what a pass there from Vlad Vulkanovs, and Chris Wilcox unable to just put that past Hewitt. Go back the other way, though. Shot oh, comes in! And takes as much of time as he liked as Paul Stanley. Yeah, it was a long puck fed from the blue line up the side there and it's cool as you like, he takes the shot on Cole, slots it home and it's now Witness Wild 1, Solihull Barons 5. Well Gary, I you think you can, uh, you can kiss goodbye to the title, maybe second place now for the, the Wild in the... Well, Anyone I don't know, could? it's still still within the grass, but it, they're now relying on other results elsewhere. Well, we're going back to centre ice with 10.56 remaining in the game. And the face-off won by the Wild. Beach receives that pass, looks to gain the zone. Challenge has the read of him, can't clear it past Hager though. Beach puts it all the way across for Robinson. Ooh. Takes a shot. You hear it come off the backboards. And Hager now reliant on what he knows best, I think. As here we go again, though, with Whitehouse for the Barons turned over. And Briley and Stubbley look to clear out of the zone once more. Well, a hard pass into the skates of. Beach coughed up onto the stick of Slater, who put it on net, and calmly Coles just wraps that one up. 10 12 remain in this game, and with each passing minute, this mountain that the Wild have got to climb gets ever steeper. Well, four goal deficit, and 10 minutes remaining in this third and final period. Hewitt decides to play that one out himself. It's a big ask, Ben. Wilcox finds Armstrong. Armstrong knocks the puck into Hyde's way. Hyde put it forward for Wyatt. Puck back on Barron's net. Armstrong's going to chase that down. Can he beat that little guy? Hyde puts the body on, creates the space. Puck goes in one more time. And Barron's managed to find Slater wide open on that far side. Puts the body on Wilcox. Mulcahy though takes it around the back of the witness net. Taking his time. Sees the open space, takes the shot himself and he sails wide. But he had all the time to turn round. Skated right round the edge of that face-off circle and cut three, straight through the slot himself. Hyde holding his man up on the board. Armstrong's able to dig that puck out but it goes straight in the way. The Barons who have taken another shot there from Harrison. Wyatt looks to clear it, kept alive by Mulcahy again. Murray uses the board, clears his own. Puck held at the halfway point by the Barons, and they're doing the job here, Gary. They're just chewing up this clock now. Yeah, it's, it is damage limitations and for the Wild, but certainly when you're trying, to, trying your hardest, and you're trying as much as you can to get onto that Barons net, Unfortunately, you're leaving yourself open at the back. Gonna, they're going to concede again if they're not careful. But you can tell by the way the Barons are playing it. They, they already think it's job done now. Well, the official, they're uh, just calling out for two of the players to return to the ice after trying to change on the face-off. So, Hager and Beecher back out. Right hand side of Coles. Tie up on the face off. Into the corner. Feed it out quickly with Morris who chokes up another one. Well, we said that they're going to leave themselves open. But again, sloppy play by the Dragons of defence. The puck comes out. 
Morris finds the back of the net again. And it's now with us while one. Solihull Baron six. Well, 8.38 remain in this period. And you can hear the fans trying to G up the, the team, but I think it's... I think it's quite certain. Well, could this have lit blue touch paper, though? Stubbly under pressure immediately. Beach can't get it round his man. Morris. Or oh, the wild going to get frustrated. Up, up. Shot comes in again. Trying to turn it round and have created a little bit of space here. Stubbly managed to get it puck over to Hager. Hager winds up, takes a shot. Oh! Stubbly was skating in. Beach now in the corner. Trying to see off. So out in front, Hager takes another shot. Bit of frustration there. Briley's managed to keep the play alive. Robinson in the corner. Hager skating in. Hager tried to feed it back to Beach after laying Hewitt down, but great defensive play there by the Barons. Yeah, Hewitt spreading himself large. And oh. there's Saul with one. And Gary, it's all over now. Yeah, it's in desperation. The Wild are leaving themselves open, but the puck's fed across. And in front of two defenders, Saul slots it home and gives the Barons a six goal lead here over the Witness Wild. It's now Witness Wild one, Solihull Barons seven. Well, the question's got to be asked, Gary do you leave Cole between the pipes or do you give, do you give Goodman a bit of time? Well, that's entirely up to the, uh, the coaching staff of the Wild, but certainly in their desperation to try and get something back out of this game it's, uh, it all seems to be falling apart as uh, seems to be some confusion here with the official Not too sure what that's about. Well, either way, we're getting ready. We've had some strange things happen tonight, anyway, Ben. <laughs> you see, the discussion carries on at the timekeeper's bench just below a commentary position here. S and strange, mysterious, mysterious happenings. This, <laughs> this disruption at the moment could go one or two ways. It could disrupt the flow that the Barons have got and held the Wild or it can put the Wild off whatever game plan they had left well whatever the game plan was Ben I think they need to rip it up because it's certainly not worked tonight no 7.36 remain in the game now and they find themselves on the back end of a 7-1 deficit a bit of a shock scoreline if you ask me Charnock tries to get past his man Good little scrap between Charnock and Challenge there. Murray tries to keep it alive. Trying to find a man out in front. No, it's gone out, unfortunately. You can see there, Wilcox was a little bit too slow to react to that one. Keep it alive, but it's stolen by Calvert once more. Brought down along with the witness player. And Liam Charnock again looks to head forward with the puck. Does so. Can he get round Challenge? Oh, big hit from Challenge oh on Charnock. And will we get a response to that? Well, well, replay here. And there's a little bit of afters between Charnock and Challenge and Vulkanovs. A little bit of handbags as you're looking at the replay there. Yeah, referees managed to go in and break. There's nothing major happening in the uh, scuffle there, but most certainly when you saw from the replay, really slammed. Charnock into, Charnock the, board. into the board. And Bailey challenged. He's had the measure of him all night, to be but fair. But this is, this is the blue touch paper we said may have been already lit here. And, and now, not only... Uh, we said Solihull are physical. Um, but certainly, it seems that uh, the Barons are having a bit of fun now at the expense of the Wild. Well, we'll await the official verdict. But in the meantime, Bailey Challenge has found himself... On the bench.
and you can see the discussions being had there between the officials, Tom Jackson and Marcus Maynard, both captains. 6.42 remaining in the period. Now, well, how will this play out? Is this a two plus two or is this a two plus five? And Jackson now arguing with the, the official. Yeah, I think, he, I think he's talking about the um, the collision into the boards. And he's not happy with whatever's been said, but skates back to his bench. Right, so we've got a two minute boarding on Bailey Challenge. And although it may not mean much at this time, it does hand an advantage to the Wild. Two minutes on the board. Five man against four. And we're gonna get a face off between Bowley and Hagra. Bowley's won that. And there goes the puck out the zone as the PK unit and the Barons does exactly what it's meant to do. Yeah, just keep it up the other end, make the Wild come back. And they've had a, they've had a, a great penalty kill so far. Stubbly put it on net. Oh, it's been stolen. Robinson's picked it out, though. Yeah. Another shot in Beach out in front. Hyde was there trying to get to it. And it's weird, Ben. Normally you would see the Wild do so well in this, and it just seems to be lacklustered. That, that's one of the words they possibly use. As Bowley takes it up the other end. Barron's looking for insult to injury with a short-handed goal. And there seems to be some ongoings with Bowley there as well. And possibly Stubbly, but Maynard's the one in charge with the puck now. Bear in mind, this is a witness power play. The PK unit of the Barons doing exactly what it should be on textbook. Yeah, Chewing a minute of that up already. Keeping the wild off the puck, you see. Beach looks to find Hager. Can't reel it in. Goes for the change as Adams just dumps that all the way down to the opposite zone. Oh, the wild out of ideas, Ben. Stubbly taken off by Mulcahy. Finds or tries to find Mulcahy in the middle. And that was Dan to fill. But here comes Beach once more. Beach with Britain in the middle. Decides to drop it to Volkanovs. Volkanovs takes a shot in. and pulls one back for the Wild. And dare I say it, he's done exactly what I said he should be doing, as our replay will show. What he managed to do was, as he approached the net, he flicks up into the corner and it's managed to get past Hewitt in the net. And now the Wild have got one back. Gain a bit of respect, so it's Witness Wild 2, Solihull Baron 7. Face off, resumes action once more as the Barons immediately jump in possession of that puck. Okai tries to take you through the middle. Great pressure from Volkanovs. Volkanovs still going. Vlad Volkanovs, well, they've blown the whistle dead. The arms up the official. Oh, what's this? Is this hooking? Is it slashing? Has it gone against the Barons? There was cries from both benches. And it has, it's gone against the Barons. Oh, well, so... So that's going to be... Dan Mulcahy goes to the box. So they're stocking the box up now with players. 4.49 in the game. And again... The Wild find themselves with the man advantage. Well, can the Wild get a couple more goals and get some... Uh, credibility? Credibility, yeah, I could say that, but I mean, I, if I was Rich Hager, I'd certainly be shouting in that dressing room. Volkanovs on the board, looks to play to Stubbly. Stubbly has a bit of time, plays it back. Volkanovs, what will he do? Back to Stubbly at the blue. Back to Vulcanoms once more, trying to create a shooting lane as he does. It's gone off sticks, up and out of play. And that's gone into next week. Well, 134 remains on the power play, 423 in the game. A 
quick change there for the Barons. Well, we find ourselves, Ben, in the uh, unfamiliar situation of the of the, uh, the Wild being five goals behind. As face-off goes the way of the Wild. You can see that defensive unit of Solihull. Oh, take the time, God. another shot right down the throw to Hewitt. And you can see there the Beach was trying to put the screen on. The fans trying to once again get behind their team. But we'll resume from the face-off spot, right-hand side of Hewitt. Well, taking his time, dropping that. As he does, Barron's come out in possession straight into the glove of Hewitt, and that's, that's all the Barron's needs to do at the moment. It's just... Soak up the time. Yeah, that's it. One minute, 21 remaining on the power play now. So, Puck will drop again. Stubbly picks it up at the point. Back to Vulkanovs. Great pressure here from Bowley and Saw. Managed to find Charnock. Breeze lost oh, his edge. Lost his edge. And Maynard clears it out. Pressure from Saw on Stubbly. Can the Wild get this back in? Vulkanovs. Absolutely nowhere to go as that red wall closes in on him. But they've turned it around. Farrell, can he get round? Stubbly, still Farrell, tries to put it in himself. It's come off the leg pad oh. of Coles. Coles with a second save and oh. a third one. Oh, no. And Coles is being held up there. Oh, and there's, well, it's tempers are flaring. Britain back up the other end. Clock well, ticking was, away. Uh, 25 well, was seconds. getting a little kick by... Uh, Coles there as he was going away. Holding it on the boards now. Not doing themselves any favours though. Vulkanovs finds Hager. Hager winds up. Let's one shoot. Oh. Runs wide. Vulkanovs again. Picks up that rebound as we're into the final 10 seconds of the power play. Vulkanovs on the half boards. Drops it back. You hear the stick tap there of Coles. The oh, he's given it away. And they've given it away and it's come down to Coles. As the power play ends. Mulkai skates straight to the bench. And Adams loses that puck there, back the other way, trying to find Hager. Hager has got support from Beach skating in, but the opportunity's gone. Beach once more, final oh. two minutes, 26 now. And here come the Barons again. Sort of takes a shot, runs wide. Into the corner, challenge, fighting away. And so. And Robinson's there as well, and they've cleared it away to Hager. Hager's brought that down, tried to get around one man, couldn't get around the other. And the Barons just calmly regain possession, immediately dispossess the Wild, keep them off the puck. Well, opportunity there for the Wild as we enter the final two minutes of this game. Hyde does enough to stop the Barons player getting a clean shot off. So was that a two minute warning, Ben? It was. <laughs> And to be honest, I think right now, if I'm a witness player, it's a little bit of a godsend. Yeah, that final whistle can't come soon enough, I think. Armstrong plays it round to Wyatt, who gets a body on there from Mulcahy. Trying to clear this puck out. And the Barons, they do, they can take all the time in the world they want. Coles was there for support, as Stubbly goes round the back of the net. Picked up once more by Murray. Murray feeds Wyatt in the centre. Armstrong can't bring that in. Charnock back to Wyatt once more. Joe Wyatt up the wing, takes his shot into the chest of Hewitt. And we're into the final minute of this game. Well, I didn't think I'd be sitting here, Ben, saying that the Witness Wild were, were five goals behind going into the uh, last minute. It's uh, it's definitely they've got something to think about after this. Yeah, I can't quite put my finger on what has happened tonight, but the witness wild we see before is just don't look like the witness wild we've been watching so far this season. Yeah, other than that first game against Whitley Warriors. Well, a little bit of a hip check over the far side there from Briley. Yeah, other than that first game against Whitley Warriors, um, we've seen the. The Wild give a good account of themselves on the ice, but um, 
Let's hope this isn't um, signs of uh, the wheels falling off this bus. Well, the Barons just dumping the puck into the wild zone, not allowing them to do much with it. Once more, Barons in possession, out in front, looking to do something. Can't do anything. We enter the final 15 seconds as Charnock still fired up from that hit from challenge before. And there's we'll still a little bit after us again. Getting into the middle. Yeah, they're forgetting what's going on here. Oh, hello, hello. You see there. Well, it's got ugly. We knew there'd be fireworks. The tan bags are thrown right out in front of the benches. Yeah, it's not what we want to see, but it's been, it's been coming. We said it was going to be... Uh, Stubbly has been dragged away there. Yeah, something, something certainly wasn't uh, wasn't going well. And it's still not over. Volkanovs now. Maynard. <laughs> Maynard and uh, Robinson's having a little cuddle. Yeah, I think is it. Maynard and Volkanovs. Well, these aren't the scenes you want to see in hockey. Yeah, I think the Robin game is over. Nobody's got anything to gain from this. Yeah, Robinson's keeping Maynard out of the way. Kemp and Bowley are talking. I'm looking around because any minute now you feel like anyone could go off. Yeah, the officials, uh, sadly, it's, uh, it's gone a little bit awry here at Planet Ice Witness. Uh, as we've got to the end of the game. You can't say we didn't see it coming. And it's still... And Charnock looks like he wants to go with someone. Well, Robinson's trying to keep control of players here, keep things calm. But it's quite clear that uh, Armstrong's not happy now. There's certainly something's been said or done down there. And... Uh, the best thing the referees can do now is get witness back to their bench and get Solihull off the ice. And that or get Coach Hager to take his players off. So, yeah, Coach Hager's asking for... Uh, well, it looks like the referee's called. No, here we go. They've finally done what they needed to do. Solihull Barons will leave the ice. Well, it doesn't look like they are, actually. <laughs> well, the fans, what fans are left, because quite a lot have already made their way out, are uh, seeing the very end of what has been what I would class as an ugly game for the Wild. Yeah, well, it wasn't pretty. They were caught on the back foot from the start. And with that, Solihull leave the ice. And the referees are now dealing with things, but um, we're going to go and uh, take the cameras down, have a word with some of the players, get their views of how things went. It ends here. Win this wild two. Solihull Baron seven. Join us after this short break. Breaks and Sun sponsor drop the puck.
and with Callum Bowley, the Solihull Barons. Callum, an absolutely emphatic performance here tonight. You must be proud of the lads. Yeah, the lads did really well tonight. Really pleased with the compete levels. Um, down low, we were really good across all three zones. Really good. Um, that's how we got to play week in, week out. And the boys put on a performance tonight, which is exactly what I asked for. So yeah, really, really pleased. Well, it was almost as if you'd done your homework on the wild because you, the puck retention tonight by the Barons was unreal. You just didn't give them an opportunity. Was that something that had certainly been practiced on? We, we spoke about it a lot in terms of like our trap in the neutral zone, but I think a lot of it comes down to the heart and wanting to retrieve pucks. Um, we spoke about spoke a lot about that this week. Um, and we played well yesterday in Solway as well, but we were unfortunate with the result. But tonight, the guys wanted to prove a point. We knew what we was up against um, and they did really well. So. And obviously, you've got to turn to the future now. You've got Blackburn coming up in the mist. There's still a possibility you could take this title here, this Midlands Cup. You, you've got to, you've got to fancy it now. Oh yeah, of course. Like you've got to be in it to win it, haven't you? So that's that's the goal. The boys are up for it. I'm up for it. So that's what we're going to do. And how have you found obviously the cup integrated into the seasonal play as well? Uh, I think it's fine. Like it's just a game of hockey at the end of the day. That's how we treat it. We turn up ready to play. We want to win every night, um, and that's the approach we take. So yeah. Well, Callum, we wish you the best of luck and we hope you can see you again soon. Thank you, guys. And with Chris Wilcox from the Witness Wild. Chris, your thoughts on the game there? One of those nights, I thought we, we started quite well. We were moving the puck pretty well going forwards. Um, led a couple of soft goals. I think the good thing is that... that they're things that we need to clean up. Um, we we let we let them have those chances, um, and I think you know, training this week we just need to clean those simple things up. Start talking a little bit more out there, and I don't think there's much to worry about if I'm honest. We picked up on it in the commentary. The wild almost didn't look the same tonight on the ice as we've seen for the rest of the season. Is it now a situation where maybe some of those injuries are really starting to affect the the flow of the team? Uh, I think it disrupts the team, certainly. I think we've got enough bodies out there that it shouldn't make an impact. But, you know, we've got a lot of guys that are carrying little things and things like that. But that is by no means an excuse for tonight. We, we just simply weren't good enough in our own zone. And then obviously looking forward, you, you say you, you now know in training what needs to be worked on. So there's a game plan and, and, and aspects of definitely what needs to be picked up on. Yeah, of course. We're relatively new as well as a team. A lot, a lot of us haven't played together. There's a lot of guys that are new this year. And to a lot of guys, this is a step up in, in, in level as well. So I think, you know, as far as, as far as tonight and even Sheffield last week, I don't think there's much to worry about. I think we, we've built, Richie's built a very, very good team team um, and I think we just need to clean up a few areas and I don't think there's panic mode we don't need to hit that panic button at all I'm sure that's, that's great for the wild fans to hear now you were one of the fresh faces onto the scene for witness this season what's the mentality been like in the locker room for like the new guys coming in it's great it's it's a great locker room it's it's upbeat um, you know it's it's a nice place to be and it's uh, tonight as an exception but but it's actually a really good place to play everyone's everyone's pulling in the same direction um, and I think you know the atmosphere in the room tonight is 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 nice because it's rubbish no one wants to be in that situation no one wants to play in those sorts of games um, and you know you see the frustration at the end um, so no panic but we'll, we'll get back to our, our ways Excellent, well, Chris, I'm sure all the fans are looking forward to that in the future. We certainly are here at Drop the Puck. We wish you all the best of the future and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Well, there you go. A very interesting result. Um, not the one that most people would have had on the cards, to be quite honest with you. An opportunity missed, I would say, by the Wild. Um, I, I, as you heard me say there to Callum in the interview, it was almost as if they'd done their homework. And I know Chris said in his interview, you know, don't panic yet. It's, it's not panic stations. They know what they did wrong. But I think what we picked up on, maybe looking at it from outside the box, was it's not the first time the Wild have been slow to start the game and caught on the back foot. It's not the first time that they've easily given the puck away and they're, they're not closing down on the press. It's not the first time that they're running the same play over and over of the long dump, trying to get around the back of teams. And I think teams are, you know, it's that old word we've used so many times, complacency. Well, and I think teams are starting to get onto it. I was going to say, teams aren't getting onto it most certainly, and it was most noticeable, uh, the long stretch passes they were doing, cross ice. And Solihull had somebody camped in the middle of the ice to, to cut that out. The netminder spoiled himself out long ways on the ice, as opposed to sitting low and, and 
and dropping into the normal butterfly. So yeah. they, they clearly knew what they needed to do, and by doing and getting the result they've got tonight, it's basically put them in a great position because the final game for Solihull is on the 7th of November, and that is against Blackburn Hawks at Solihull. And, of course, Solihull win that. They clinch it. Yeah, and obviously for those that have obviously played there or visited there, they know that Solihull planting ice is, it's a bit of an intimidating rink, okay? It still hasn't got the plexiglass <laughs> up, you're playing through netting. The fans are literally on the rink with you. They're on top of you. The noise at Solihull. You're playing with the fans. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's one of that. It is an intimidating rink. So that massively is going to play into the favour of Solihull now. Well, yeah, playing at home it is, of course. So, I mean, yeah, well done to Solihull getting the result today because that's taken them from third. It could take them all the way to the to the top if things go their way. But, of course, on the other hand, Witness Wild, an injured animal, maybe coming into their next game, Well, some, somebody's going to pay. It is, but the next game, luckily now for them, is league play which means they can forget all the cup Yay! stuff out the way they can get back to concentrating on the league which is what we know they do best so you know I'd, to use every player i've ever interviewed it's just a it's a hockey game one's out the way we'll move on to the next one we'll look forward to the next one and i think that's exactly what the mentality that witness have got to go with but i think you hit the nail on the head during the commentary there ben i think the injuries that have occurred the likes of gilbert the likes of hadjek those key players in the middle there they certainly miss them today, and that could cost them going down the line. Yeah, I know we've used multiple metaphors and analogies today. Um, we might as well you know, chip it off with one more. Let's say it was a football team. We saw the defence, we saw the striking attackers. What we didn't see was that playmaking midfield. It literally it would go from one zone to the other and given away, and then immediately they were on the back foot chasing it backwards again. And I think, you know... We heard Chris Wilcox say there, you know, Rich has already identified what needs to be worked on this week in training. I hope they can get on that soon as and get back to the ways of old because right now, I know the fans are going to be feeling a little bit dejected about today's performance. Well, talking of old, you can catch old episodes of Drop the Puck, which includes teams like the Solihull Barons on our, our normal channels. You can get us on Instagram, you can get us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, of course, you go on to the YouTube channel, which has got our catalogue of uh, back games from seasons, seven seasons now, including some of the uh, the Stream Cup series that we did. Um, of course, you've got our um, website as well, BS, uh, uh, BASMTV.com. Also, don't forget our uh, merchandise store, which is on Facebook as well. Um, but I think pretty much ends it all for us here in this Midland Cup series that we've been involved in. Um, I'm looking forward to league action now, Ben. I know. I think I think a lot of us are fans, players, the the, 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 the crew here. We're all wanting to get back into the league play because that's where it gets really tasty. Well, thanks to the two teams for giving us a great uh, action on the ice today. Thanks to the fans that turned up. Of course, thank you to you, the viewers, for tuning in and watching. Thanks to our production crew. I've been Gary Lee. I've been Ben Lee. And we've been Drop, Drop the Puck. puck.